Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to SPQR, otherwise known as uh, Richard's Wet Dream, really, there, isn't it? So tell us about SPQR then, Richard, what is it? So, it's a new Warlord product that's just literally came out yesterday. What day was it yesterday? I can't remember now. What day is today? Uh, it's Sunday, wasn't Sunday, it? Really? Yeah. Yeah, Sunday, yeah. So it came on a Saturday, and I, gave, I caved in. I wasn't going to buy it originally, <laughs> uh, but we did it. So, uh, don't forget, guys, this will be also on my channel, but also on the Ostfront uh, Collaborative um, Gaming channel that me and Marshall have created. Uh, and we're going to have an unboxing today. So, this is going to be fantastic. Um, so, this is SPQR. It's a skirmish hell Caesar, I'd go as far as to say. So, if you like ancient Roman warfare and Celtic warfare, this is is going to be uh, you know, a go-to game. And as you can see, it's the starter set, uh, £40, 40 of the great British pounds, <laughs> uh, but you get an added extra here. Can you, you want to point out what's on the front of the box? Hi, we do have a miniature. So what do we have here then? This is a blood sacrifice. So I think the blood sacrifice was during uh, battles, wasn't it? Uh, obviously for the Romans, it's, uh, they'd have like a sacrifice. I don't know so much about that myself. Is, it, is, it, is a guy killing a sheep <laughs> or a goat? Is it, let's have a quick look. Or a geep. It's we'll, a goat. We'll, we'll go for the middle ground and we'll go for a geep. <laughs> so I'll let you turn the box around. You can discuss what's in the box if you like. Oh, some weight there, isn't there? Oh, oh dear. Oh, that's some weight. Okay, so what do we get in the set then? So I did touch this on my own channel some time ago when it was actually initially announced. Uh, but we're having here then, so we have our two heroes. We have the uh, gold chieftain and we have the Roman hero. Now he looks, uh, he looks uh, Republican era, doesn't he? Is it Caesarian? I'm a Caesarian, you'd call it, I think. I think it looks Roman Republic. I think there is a set with the Caesarian Romans, but I think these guys do look around about uh, Republic sort of era. But I mean, they kind of look like, yeah, they look like Republic. Like, they look very similar to Terraria, I don't know really, but these guys, your Principe and Hastati. Mm. Definitely Hastati, yeah, definitely. There we go. So, we have our, as far as we can tell, I think we have maybe a mix of Hastati... Uh, Republican Roman forces over here, maybe some uh, Principe as well. Uh, maybe, I don't know, we might have some like uh, Terraria as well, would make sense. And then we do have a, you get a lot of uh, goals in here, don't you? So we have some nice goals, I mean we have some armoured goals, we've got unarmoured goals, we've got goals, we've got goals, we've got goals and goals. Goals and goths, goals. So this box contains a 196 page full cover softback rulebook, which is quite nice. I can imagine it'd be like an A5 book really. Ah, so these are Caesarian Romans. So we have eight plastic Caesarian, well, Caesarian Roman legionaries with Gladius. We have eight with the Pelum. We have one Roman hero. Okay, so that is a total of 17 Romans. And we have 40 plastic gold warriors, 12 gold tribesmen archers, a gold chieftain, and yeah. <sighs> There's a, you can tell the quality of troop there, can't you? I think just yeah, from the box set. I mean, that is quite impressive, but it, it's a very nice box. I mean, it has some weight in there. Do you know what, when you go to a game shop and you pick something up and it's like really light, you think, you know what, I've not really spent my money, but this <laughs> is just, yeah. Should we, go, should, we, should we just cut to the chase and just get into this? Do I get the, uh, the honours? You, you're the honours to do it. This is where I screwed it all up. I was so tempted last night to take the, the cellophane off, but <laughs> I, I thought, you know what, no, we're going to do it, we're going to do it together. You can do it, but you've got to do it with your teeth. But, I mean, it's quite nice to have this model. I mean, I don't know whether they're uh, only having them in limited supply. I'm not entirely sure, but if you check the Warlord, um, the Warlord site out, of course the link will be provided below, um, it will probably be on there. And I'm assuming it will be a, a model you can pick up. So what we're going to do... There we go. So we have the Roman sacrifice over here. The blood I can sacrifice. See, I, I don't like it when I pull this box up and I just see naked fanatics. <laughs> no. Well, on my side, I'm seeing... Uh, hello. Oh, this is quite cool, then. So it's Spanjor SBQR warbands. So what I'm looking at here, guys, is, as you can see, we do have some figures over here. Now, the writing says it's Spanjor SBQR warband. I'll start a new one with our comprehensive range of highly detailed SBQR figures. Uh, here are a few examples. So we have... Uh, Polo and Boronus, we have Roman Cavalry, we have Julius Caesar. Oh, is it Julius Caesar or Julius Kaiser? It's one of these things, isn't it? Like, yeah, I, uh, I, I don't, I can't fully remember, but I think it's definitely Julius Caesar. Uh, and then we have the Macedonian Heteroic Cavalry. What do you have on your, oh, we've got some Persians. Obviously. So we've got some, um, oh, we've got some Dacian Kings, we've got some Numidian Cavalry, uh, Iberian um, Swordsmen. Uh, and also on the other side, we've just got some naked fanatics. And then, uh, 
Oh, wow. so we got the, yeah, and then we got the wow. We could have, we've got King Darius there over here on, on a, his chariot. On a chariot. I'd love to see his rules. I mean, look at that. That's a really nice model. Yeah. That. So what we do? Oh, it's actually. I thought it's it'd not, be an A5. There. It's not an A5, but and to be honest with you, with starter sets, you normally only see the uh, a smaller A5 book, which I is nice. I expected an A5. I know it isn't hardback, but that is still. That's still quite a nice book for what you get for... I think I prefer him like that, to be honest, sometimes. That is pretty sweet. What do we do? We take everything out, and then we can... Uh, mm -hmm. We'll have a look. Oh, that's quite nice. So that's a reference sheet, looks like it. Yeah, I reference. like it when they do things like that, because it's one of these, you just get it there, it's easy enough. You can just cut that out. Normally, I think I've had one for Hail Caesar, but I've just cut this out, and you can use yeah. the reference well, you sheet. Could, you could probably laminate it as well. So over here, then, we do have a number of cards. It's uh, it's interesting, really, isn't it? It's like every a lot of these war game companies they do seem to be going with the uh, card system, don't they? Really quick reference. I think it's it's e very handy. Yeah, it's easier for the casual war gamer to play more more of a complex war game uh, mm -hmm. with little cheat. I think cheat sheets is the word, isn't <laughs> it? So we have our armored goals over here. So there we go. Now the quality of the actual sprue is yeah, it's decent enough. It look wow. Well, I suppose this is it, really. It's like a, a certain level of quality that you'll get with resin. They seem quite nice. I think they probably need just a little bit of a file just to go over it, really. Stand, well, not standard 12 dice, but no tape measure. Just putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> so this was packed by Mirella. Thank you very much there, Mirella. Thank you very much. You'll be remembered. Hashtag. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So what I've got here, I've got some shields. I think for these are for the Romans. Uh, yeah, it looks like the Romans come in the little boxes, don't yeah. they? Which is quite interesting. We have. Um, I've got armored goals there. We have two of the uh, heroes. We've got. You know, I've not seen these models before. I'm just that I've not seen them that much that so I'm going to take them out <laughs> if I can take them out. <laughs> I do quite like the actual uh, moulds here, like there is a little bit of, uh, yeah you just need to get like the file and just smooth it. It seems to be the actual flesh, the cloven isn't so bad. Nope, it's childproof, I can't get into it. But there is uh, a Gaul hero doing this of a shield and a sword, it's quite cool. And you have this Roman general grasping his cloak and doing this. Can, uh, is that uh, part of interpretive dance though? Yes he is. <laughs> But I mean, we've got so far one, two, three, four sprues there. Uh, how many did you get on here? So it looks like one, two, three, four, five, and five. Yeah, so it looks like you get ten. So ten uh, goals on each of these sprues. We have some uh, Gaulic arches in the, the little sprue. Oh, these are quite cool. They're, they're cool. And these are one model, by the way. These are all one model. So oh, that's quite nice. apart from a little bit of cleaning up. Your jobs are good, and that saves me putting together how many archers are in that box set. So, do you think these might be the Roman hero, or do you think they might be? Uh... Ooh, they. Oh I... no, these are just the foot troops. Yeah, aren't they? I've not seen Romans like that. I play, I play Hell Caesar, you see. As this well, this is why I was thinking that they were like the uh, Republicans. Just I don't know, they look quite Republican. So but think... then again, Caesarian Romans, it is obviously the Roman Republic. So... These could be a new cast, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, but I've not ever seen Romans like that before, especially uh, mm. I've, I've playing Hell Caesar. I've not seen these before. But then, very, what? How many parts is that miniature in? One, two, three, <laughs> four, four or five. Parts for the miniature. So we've got the shield, we've got the head, we've got the body. I mean, the body, the fact is, it's like you're only putting the shield on. And this is quite easy as well, isn't it? What I like about this is it looks like it's fairly easy to fit, uh, fit together, but um, you could probably do quite a bit of like, custom work on this. I can imagine what it could maybe do is maybe replace the pelum with uh, metal ones, perhaps, you know, mm -hmm. like a little bit of like brass. Could be done. Yeah, you've got um, options for it. Yeah, I got, that one the best. got options for a uh, trumpet and a standard. I'm not too sure what how that affects the game mm. or what's in the game, uh, but there is options for that. And also, uh, you've got standard bearing. You've got the guy with the you know the lion pelt on his head, and then you've got the you know the leg it, I suppose it is with the uh, head headrest headrest or feathers going the opposite you know vertical uh, horizontal rather than vertical. That's the way. Headrest. Headrest. Head. Head dress. Head, feather crest. Head, head dress. <laughs> so we obviously do have the actual miniature bases over here. So they're pretty much the same as like the warlord bases for uh, bolt action, but they're, they're not bad. I mean, I quite like the fact that they're like got a little bit of a lip there, but a little bit smaller, rather a little bit uh, lower down. So quite nice. You get uh, quite a few there. Yeah, so each row is about five, so you get plenty. These are 28 mil miniatures, of course. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming you could probably change the up the uh, scale if you wanted to. It'd be interesting to see what it says in the rules, like whether you yeah. can actually potentially use smaller scale. So what we'll do, we'll have a quick 
look at the cards. I think we've got some transfers in here, which could be used now. You're going to be using them like temporary tattoos, you know, when you go down to Skegness. Yeah. <laughs> look, Mum, I've got a tattoo. Sorry, it's childproof. <laughs> this is the hilarity part of the video where I can't actually physically get into things. Oh yeah, it is that childproof stuff. See, this is why I've been telling you, you need to uh, take on the genes of a beaver. <laughs> Your laugh would have come in handy right now, wouldn't it? I cut it and I managed to open it where it should be open. <laughs> so we'll have a quick look at the cards and uh, what they do. Um, so... There we go, Richard. Oh. <laughs> So we'll have a quick look at these. I'll give you a fruit to go through. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So what we've got here, we've got, uh, we have two classes of um, people in um, SPQR, UDRC. So SPQR. NLP. <laughs> we have minions, which are your normal foot troops, like your warriors, your Roman soldiers. And then you have, of course, your infantry heroes. Uh, so there's two types of unit, heroes and infantry. Particularly quite simple, really. It's nice to see that there is a skirmish ancient game because, you know, I love how Caesar, you know, looking to play Field of Glory on the tabletop. I told you to get that in there. <laughs> um, and literally, it is just nice. And also, these cards have, I know you can't see these on here, but look at the website below, guys. They do have point values, uh, a little bit of a blurb, uh, and also you can change their point value by buying different things for them. Like for the hero, you can give them uh, small shield, large shield, leather, chain mail, helmet, spear, dagger, axe, great sword, sword, two-handed sword, bow, horse, and javelin. And each have a cost. Um, I'm assuming that's how it affects the warrior and his stats. And then same thing for the infantry. And for the minions, they seem to have um, the same thing. They do have an option where you can buy um, so, different yeah. equipment. I've got the uh, Roman legionaries over here. So obviously the legionaries being the minions. I do like the term minion. It's not something you come across quite often. Uh, so with the actual uh, Caesar's legions, the legionary, uh, for example, I could purchase a peeler for three denarii each. I like the fact that's in denarii. That's quite good. Yeah, it's Takes us back. Slings are uh, for three denarii. One mod on each unit may purchase a horn for 10 denarii. One mod on each unit may purchase a standard for 25 denarii. I mean, how much are the heroes as a base? About 50 denarii? It says, well, it's got a point. Oh, no, 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 it's nine denarii for infantry. Is that per model? It must be per model then. See, this one's saying 25. Yeah, it must be. It must be, because you get loads. How much is a Roman soldier? So a Roman legionary is about 24 denarii. An infantryman is nine denarii. So you can see the quality there from a Roman. And then you've got the infantry hero, which is the uh, Roman one. He's 50 points. The Gaul one is 45 points, so they're similar. So it's just the, as you can see, the infantry definitely have their... They're powerful, but they're not uh, outrageously powerful, isn't it? I suppose they're a bit more like a class cannon, aren't they? But I'd really be quite careful about how I use them. Like the Gaul tribesmen here, but I've got in my hands. These guys are seven denarii. So that's even cheaper. And uh, I can purchase a helmet for them. An actual helmet. They can have, can they they, have they helmets? Can, they can have swords wow. for three denarii each. They can have a small shield for three denarii. Oh, wow. But they can have two javelins per tribesman for two denarii. I think that's really where they come in handy. So obviously these are going to be your skirmishers. And you, it seems like, uh, at the moment in time, just off the back of looking at the starter set, the uh, Celtic force are more the swarm of, oh, yeah. of a million men just charging into line. <laughs> and the Roman Republic are more of the elite sustained warrior. You know, losing 10 tribesmen is not going to be as bad as losing five or six um, things because of the point value. Uh, just a quick look at the back of the book of the uh, book. It says you get a complete warband list of Caesar le uh, legions, Gaul, uh, Dacia, Imperial Rome, Britain, Germania, Macedonia, Athens, Sparta, Thebes, Persia and Iberia. So you've got a good mix from... That's quite a good alive, uh... A good, uh, you know, east to west kind of mix there. So just having a quick look through... It's very nice. Very nice pictures. I've not yet seen how good the contents list is, because that mm -hmm. sometimes is a, in any rule book. But it looks full colour there, so I can imagine I have some history in there as well, which is quite nice. Can we get elephants? Please, <laughs> can we get elephants? Because you know what? Uh, I suppose the direct competition, well, they, I suppose the direct uh, comparison is really going to be down to like the Warhammer 
40,000 sort of battle boxes. And the thing is with those, it's like, I don't think you, do you get a, do you get a rule book or do you get like a miniature rule book? I think you get a miniature rule book, but that's yeah. nice getting an, a, an A4 one. I've not, I've not, but then, I've you, not. but then you need the codexes. So I yeah. don't know. It's like, a, we're new to SPQR, obviously. We've only just opened the box. So I don't think we need a codex. I don't think I've seen any mention of a codex. No, but it, see, it seemed basically there. Mm. The, uh, I'd imagine there'll be like uh, theatre expansions and like era expansions. But I mean, this is it. So it's like you've got the SPQR book there. And yep, you might get the Caesarian Romans. You might get the uh, Gauls. But the thing is, it's like, well, you've got the rule book. If you want to choose a different army, you don't have to go and buy a different book. You've already got it. So but, that's quite good. But it would be nice for them to do theatre lists, like yeah, that's quite cool. one. But like, it seems you can fight Romans versus Roman. You could have oh yeah, the uh, many civil wars. Exactly, definitely. and that that is going to be such an interesting thing. Like I said, with other box set, I think I'd buy that again <laughs> for forty pound. What you get there, it, no, the rule book as well. I mean, I can imagine that being twenty plus pound on the uh, yeah, on the that's site quite itself. nice. Uh, you know, and that is a weightable thing. And then also the miniatures on top of there. It is such a good thing. And the decals as well. So you've just not got that. And you've got 12 dice. Like, you need more dice mm. as a war gamer. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it. You've got the reference sheets. I mean, that would be so easy just to, like, laminate, really. And that, that's just handy. It's laid out there. Makes it quite easy. I always like these little dioramas to put on the pictures. And especially in the book. Mm. I, I, I always spend several minutes looking over them and what's going on. <laughs> and so you've got, you, like, got guys in the background throwing, you know... Um, uh, got the slings and you've got guys getting stabbed in the front. And you can see the Hellenistic inspiration over here, kind mm. of the design of the actual helmet. I mean, this is like, well, I suppose this is with the Caesarians. It's like, obviously, like, they, well, George Caesar is. I suppose it's like, do you classify them as Caesarians of the time of Caesar, or is it after Caesar's death that they become Caesarian? But, but again, I suppose it was, um, it's really only under the Empire of Augustus, isn't it, really, that we get the Imperial Roman, so it makes sense. So I suppose prior to Caesar, you have Republicans, but it'd be interesting to see, like, really quite early. So we could have, like, some Etruscans. We could have, like, really very early Roman-style armies. It'd be interesting to see how these guys play as to whether they'll actually take their style as uh, what people would know of the Imperial Legions or will they be closer to the Republic Legions. So that'd be quite interesting. So we'll have a quick look through the mm -hmm. rules uh, reference sheet uh, yeah, just to have awesome. a little look around. So if we start at the top, we've got checks. So this is a qu uh, when performing a check roll... Uh, Roll a dice, add the appropriate characteristic. The final result equals a six or more. The check has succeeded. If you roll a one, a one is a failure. No matter what bonus are being played, the roll of a six is always good, and a one is a bad. I quite like the weapon special rules here. So we have long, very long, two-handed. So a lot of these don't look like they actually apply to the set we've got in front of us. So it looks like this reference set is just the standard for the game. But it's good to see these special rules for models that you don't have because you're like, well, oh, that sounds quite cool. I'd like to go get that in the future. Mm. So we've got cover as well. Uh, we've got range condition. So cover is a factor within this game. So being in cover is good when you're getting shot at. You know, so and then we got also falling. So it looks like you can fall. That's quite good. It's like a dynamic use of the actual battleground. So, it sort of encourages you to have like a multi-layered, like farmstead and stuff like that. So that's that's it. so don't fall off a building ten to fifteen inches because that's uh, four wounds there. Unfortunately, nobody wants that. Um, so we've got we've got the weapon rules. Uh, we've got axe, club, dagger. Um, but if it, as you can see, axe, the special rule is lethal. Uh, the club is a smasher. So we'll just do that again. So look at the axe. Lethal. The lethal score is used as a penalty to an opponent's armour check. And is also the number of wounds removed from the unit upon successful strike. A lethal weapon cannot remove more than one model from a single successful attack unless being wielded by a hero. So, that's quite good. So I think that's what it means with a, with a, a lethal weapon. Mm. <laughs> There's a joke somewhere there. When you're stabbing somebody and do like massive damage, it take it, so you're killing one model mm. rather than like it, it magically killing two guys in that yeah, one yeah. thrust. So it, I can see the balance there where they're trying to balance that war game. And if we go to, I suppose this is it. it's like the minions and minions. It's like they can't have like one minion taking out two minions. It's like the minions are really there to. Uh, I suppose they're there to be the uh, the attrition element, are they? And this is it. I suppose it's like to some degree, I imagine you could probably win a battle with your minions. But it's going to be more so the heroes, isn't it? So you can already see like how the game's meant to be uh, really played, really. And like I said, only a hero can do the multiple wounds yeah. on multiple characters, which make, makes sense as a hero is like... They're Russell, doing my yeah. Is Russell Crowe with <laughs> two daggers. And if we just look at... Quickly, one look at more thing. Uh, something that for a little bit... Um, thing, a pike. A pike is very long, which... 
you can expect that. So, we'll just have a quick look. So, a unit using a very long weapon gains plus one bonus to a melee check when fighting an enemy uh, who does not also have a very long weapon. However, if the enemy wins the round of close combat, the very long weapon is not being used for the rest of the combat. A very long weapon may not be used in a dual fight prison. So, I think that represents somebody with a pike mm. charging forward, losing the combat, having to drop the yeah, pike. Yeah, but I was to switch to the actual Switch stuff. to the dagger. So, that, but I'm also, from just that little brief uh, uh, description there, if they win, they keep your opponent at ranged, for the example. And it does, it, well, this is it, it's like the phalanxes, it's like they're not impenetrable, they're very strong, but there is always something to be said for actually just charging them, because it's like, if you can win that combat, you take those pikes out. So, as we can see here, we have armour. So, armour seems like it will affect movement. So, we've got uh, animal skin, which is plus zero move, plus one armour. We have chainmail, which is minus one, but plus one. So, we see the negative effects of wearing uh, full plate armour. Oh, right, so that affects your movement. So That's it, quite interesting. Like I said, I'm sure there is more details in here, but giving you a little bit of a brief overview of the rules. So, first glance, uh, Marshall, what is your, what your first opinion of just getting this box out right now? And what you like about it. To be honest, I quite like the rule book. It's nice that it's all full colour. And like uh, that's quite hefty. That's quite It's like anything that's got weight in, in gaming, it's like, <laughs> yeah, this I've spent my money. It might be paperweight, but Well, I mean we're taking a look through this. So I mean this is full colour. I love the fact when you actually see the models being used in the pictures. It's like I like the art, but then it's like it's nice to see the models being used and how they're painted, because you can take some inspiration from that. I mean I quite like this with the actual scenarios here with the actual little images. So it's like, if you guys can see, we've got like little images there of like villages, huts, the forest. So it's quite nice, actually. There's a lot in there. But that that's full colour. I mean, there's a lot in here. I mean, we're actually getting some history, society, that, that's pretty awesome. But I mean, we've got some different uh, heroes in here. So we've got, uh, what I like is the fact we've got these stats as well. So that's awesome. We can see the actual cost. So Pompey would be 130 denarii. So he has a special rule. <sighs> oh, he's pricey. <laughs> he's pricey. Oh, well, he's got the cash, hasn't he? Pompey has deep pockets and is willing to spend it on capable allies. If a warband wins a battle with Pompey in it, he will spend a fortune to see continued, enjoy continued success. The warband will immediately receive an amount of denarii equal to half the denarii value of the enemy warband that has just been beaten. Oh. Wow. And this is it, this is the aspect of the game that we, well, I'm definitely quite interested in. It screams in. campaigns to me, this does. I'm, I'm looking forward to this because this is it, it's like, it's really, it's not just a singular war game. I mean, the fact is, it's like for this here. If you're playing Pompey, I can imagine he might not be the most uh, combat effective hero, but the fact is, he's like your, he's your happy merchant, isn't he? He's really? like, you want more men? And we've got Mark Antony. Well, that's really quite nice. Uh, would you like to know what Mark Antony's special well, rule is? I'm a uh, skilled fighter or something, isn't he? So his special rule is called Up Pluto's Arse. <laughs> <laughs> the men serving under Mark Antony can become, could become fanatically loyal. If any unit in Mark Antony's warband fails a will to fight check within 12 inches of them, instead of being removed from the table, they will perform an immediate and free move action. They must move as close to him as possible, and this will count as fleeing from close combat. However, any casualties gained from this will not cause another will to fight check. So that, that's quite cool. That, that's quite cool. That's kind of comic as well, isn't it? I would go as far as saying. I mean, there's a lot in here. I mean, this is it, guys. It's like, we're definitely going to be playing this on our channel. And just, yeah, look at this. We've got uh, Dart, well, Dacia, Samar, well, Samatia, is it Samatia? Samatia. Samatia? Samatia? Samatia, I think the <laughs> But no, they, they just, well, my kind of look at it, it's the wide range of nations you can play. You can play from, you know, uh, pike phalanxes to... Cataphracts. Oh, going to be nice. I like this. I like the fact that there's a lot of history in here. They go, it seems to go, so if we take a look here then, so it seems to go through the actual faction itself, and it shows you a couple of these actual scenarios, gives you some history, and then it seems to go into a couple more of the units, and then I think if we go a little bit further on, see some more scenarios, yep, yeah. now we're on to Iberia, so it gives you, I think mean, this is quite nice, I mean this is quite good, just uh, just the fact that you're reading some history here, the fact that you're actually learning a little bit more, and this is it, I mean the half aspect of wargaming is the learning, isn't it? Mm. It's like you're not into this unless you actually have an avid interest in real history, do you really? This is quite cool, I'm, I'm happy about this, I'm quite, I'm quite excited to do it, Richard. <sighs> Macedonians look awesome. Like, look at these guys. So this is where your very long lances are coming from. Well, your pikes are coming from there. That's nice. I, I'm very impressed with this. Just There we go. And yeah, we okay. have your phones. We have the elephants. How, how many points is an elephant? <sighs> you know, he's not that much. He's been losing weight, really. So we're looking about 250 points for the elephant. You can get a turret 
on the elephant for 25 denarii. Now, the turret is interesting. A war elephant equipped where a turret has a handful of warriors riding it, equipped with bows and javelins, oh. which they use to rain missiles down upon enemies. So long as the war elephant is not in close combat, it gains a free shoot action every phase. So, you've got this big beastie. You've got this big beastie here, who's going to be an absolute monster in close combat, but he's getting free shots. I tell you what I do like is the fact that they're using the images of models from uh, Hell Caesar as well, mm. aren't they? They are. So you can they? buy this in the Successor State pack, actually. I'm quite tempted by that one, actually. So there we go, then. So what would you say are our closing thoughts here, then, Richard? So I think it is definitely something to be watching out for. It is going to be... It's it's a more lighter game than Hell Caesar. Hell Caesar is a fantastic game. I, I, will, play, I will keep playing Hell Caesar, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. But it is a lighter skirmish game. I mean, there's promise for campaigns there with the uh, with the rules for the commanders. Models are the, I think some of the models are from the Hell Caesar range, but that does not matter. You can base them now. Well, if they're interchangeable, yeah, that'd be quite you cool. Know, I'm impressed with a lot of this stuff here, and to be honest with you, I'm just I can't wait till you guys see our next video where we're going to have these miniatures assembled and we're going to be you know battling each other. What would you who would you play? <laughs> I think this is it. Um, out of the ones that we've got in front of yeah. us, to be honest, I'm probably going to go with the goals just because it's like mm. I need all the chances I can get. So I think between now and then, I think I need to get some more. Ro <laughs> I need to get some Roman cavalry or some Gaulic cavalry or even chariots. That that's going to be amazing. I think I'd be quite interested in playing as a personal army. Maybe Persians. I mean, the cataphract could be really interesting. But even like playing as like uh, I mean Macedonia. I mean it, I mean it's a Spartan, but but I'd say I, I like Macedonian pikes. I mean. It's so effective. There's a reason why it was so widely used and for so long. It's just it's, it's hard. I mean, what are you going to do when you've got a guy that's about 20 feet away poking at you? You can't do much, can you? Walk the other way. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Go around him. <laughs> so, thank you very much for watching, guys and girls. Uh, if you've watched this on the Osfront channel, please subscribe to the Osfront channel. Uh, and also go to the uh, Osfront Patreon and come and be a supporter of us. There are a few... Um, give backs that we can give you right now, but in the future, when the channel picks up, there will be uh, a lot of rewards for loyal menu members for our group. But varied also, as well, which would be quite nice. Varied, but also check the link below to Marshall's site, XTRGs. Uh, he's a fantastic online war gamer, and of course we are a collaborative channel here that we're trying to put together good content. We're hoping this audio and the video has improved from our last video. Definitely, hoping that it has so, improved. Definitely. So guys, please chat. Uh, put some comments below. Give us some big up. Yeah, likes. pointers would be quite nice, wouldn't they? You know, give us some pointers. We we put spent a lot of time researching, doing stuff. There's more Marshall than me, I've got to say. Uh, but like I said, guys, if you've seen this on my channel, the Mr. Richard York channel, uh, don't forget to come and subscribe. Also, check the link to my Patreon. Uh, but come and join me on Osfront, and we'll see you on the next battlefield. Thank you very much, for that, ladies and gentlemen. And bye bye. And